This is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. Um, I was in a patrons live uh, earlier on in the week and I had a question that I pulled three cards for and it came up with a really surprising kind of confusing result. So I wanted to do a full reading on it. I can't remember who it was, sorry, who asked the question, uh, who the patron was, because I'm just, I just wrote a little note to make sure I did a full reading on the question. But the question itself was about uh, Ra. Ra, spelled R-A, is the sun god dating back to Egyptian times. Uh, he basically, um, well, I'm assuming Ra is a he, but otherwise he would have been a goddess. But Ra is the god of the sun, which boils down to um, lots of superstition and detail and, um, and information. But if you really burrow, burrow deep, Ra, being the god of the sun, is the creator of all living things, including the creator of people. And um, this was one of the most, if not the most important god um, in Egyptian times. Now, the question was not specifically relating to Ra, but about the Ra material, which is a series of 106 different uh, recordings that took place in 19, I think it was during in 1980 or in the 1980s. Now, the detail of this is a little bit more complicated, but it's um, generally called the Law of One the Ra material and the Law of One. Now, the premise behind this Law of One is that 106 conversations took place through the channeling of information from Ra, which is not a single person in this particular instance. Uh, Ra was described in this channeling experience as being a series of entities that represent um, the, the planetary um, confederation or so a series of different planets basically a link between the human consciousness and uh, the purpose of life and creation of um, of life and what we consider to be UFOs okay so it's a little bit complicated because it kind of blends in and out of all of those things but it was channeled in conversation through a woman called um Carla Ruberk. Oh, sorry, Rukert. Carla Rukert. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll make sure that her um, name is written correctly above the screen. And also uh, supervised and with some interaction by um, a fellow called Don Elkins. Don Elkins. Um, was the founder of LL Research, and he was born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1930. He held a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Louisville, as well as, well as a Master of Science in General Engineering from Speed Scientific School. And I'm sorry that my hair is wet. I'm really conscious that I like it to dry naturally. Anyway, it'll probably be dry by the end of this video. Uh, so he was the founder and the head of the University of Alaska's Mechanical Engineering Department in 1960 to 1961, and also was Professor of Physics and Engineering at the University of Louisville for 12 years, from 1953 to 1965. Uh, he at one point left his position uh, and became a Boeing 727 pilot for a major airline in order to devote himself more fully to UFO and paranormal research. He eventually became captain and flew until his death in 1984. He also served with distinction in the US Army as a Master Sergeant during the Korean War. Now, before the organization LL Research was formed, he began working on what ended up being continued as the work by LL Research but he started working in 1955 on this. He used um, 
age regression hypnosis to research reincarnation and he talked with and visited UFO contactees or self-proclaimed contactees all over the United States um, often, often piloting his own small plane and investigated uh, many areas of um, alleged um, paranormal um, activity. He studied, studied paranormal studies and worked with a large number of scholars, researchers, experiencers, um, abductees and others um, with his partner, Carla. He published some of um, this UFO research in a book called Secrets of the UFO in 1976. And in 1962, Don began the experiment of channeling using uh, protocols that he had learned from a contact, um, a, a UFO contactee group um, in Detroit, Michigan. The experiment um, turned out to be the principal effort of LL Research, which can be found at llresearch.org. Um, and that includes all of the transcript and also the original tape recordings of the 106 conversations that um, were uh, proclaimed to have been channeled through Carla. Now, Carla um, Rukert, just to give you a little bit of information about her, um, she, her name was actually Carla Rukert Dash McCarty, and she was born on July 16, 1943, in Lake Forest, Illinois. She completed her bachelor's degree in English literature at the University of uh, Louisville in 1966 and earned her master's degree in library service in 1971. She served as a librarian and bibliographer to college and school libraries for six years. She was a um, meditator with a group that Don Elkin actually started in 1962 and became partners with Don in 1968. She turned full time to assisting Don with his research and together they formed the L forward slash L research, uh, which you can actually find online. It actually is a nonprofit organization. In 1974, she claims to have begun channeling and continued unceasingly in that effort until she was stopped in 2011 by a spinal fusion surgery. She was the person who uh, was used as the forum to channel information from Ra um, in the 1980s, which did uh, result in 106 different conversations. The law of one is the product of those conversations. And now it is published as a book by LL Research. And it's also uh, claimed um, to sort of be annexed by other individuals or reinterpreted by other individuals in various books and um, elsewhere online and things like that. I would love to be able to give you a really simple uh, breakdown of what the law of one is all about. But I have been looking at it now for two days and um, it's not that easy to get a grasp of. Ba basically, um, what I've been able to understand from this law of one is that the Egyptian sun god, Ra, which actually manifests in this channeling, these channeling episodes as being a, a representative of a confederation of planets. But not all of the planets. So there's conversation there about how some are more evolved than others. And so there's a representation to a certain degree. But even Ra itself um, doesn't have all of the information because they they themselves are uh, more advanced than say we are here on earth but not not ultimately advanced where they have everything 
I've looked at lots of different segments of um, the conversation. I've looked at LL Research and I've also looked at another website which is called lawofone.info which in which you can actually search and browse the different topics of the conversations. And I have spent quite a number of hours browsing and searching to be able to get my head around the conversations. It's not easy to do. And the communications that took place during this channeling um, series of episodes, the 106 episodes, never really provided straight answers. <laughs> and you know what I'm like? I'm meat and potatoes. And so immediately my spidey senses have kind of been alerted to that. Now, I also found uh, a really fascinating guy. And if he ever sees this, I would love to have a chat with him about coming onto this channel to do a session of just discussion about what it is that he knows. But unfortunately, I have no idea what his name is. He has a channel which is called uh, Museum of Tarot here on YouTube. And the Museum of Tarot is actually a web by a web based. Um, it's not actually a physical museum. That is the name of the organization. And um, he is an astrophysicist who never gives his name. I've listened to a whole bunch of his videos or watched a whole bunch of his videos now. And um, he appears to have um, a strong belief in lots of things that we are also looking at um, through this channel in tarot. But um, he also is quite skeptical about others. And I really like that because so am I. <laughs> I've seen his um, explanation of Ra uh, and compared it to his explanation of the law of one. And he claims them to be two totally different things. The way that he describes Ra, which seems on the face of it to probably be an interesting viewpoint is that Ra, the god of sun, or, you know, that would be the simplification of what Ra is, actually was an example of um, the gods um, that were in contact with the Egyptian people, the people in the Egyptian uh, period of time, in around about the 25th or so century BC, did communicate with the Egyptians, but also did so in such a way as to provide tools to help them to understand and learn what it was they were worshipping, similar to how Christians have the Bible to work with. The difference when it comes to this law of one, which claims to be um, extended channeling channeling through Kala to, with Ra is that it seems very, very, very different. It's not really very helpful. And when you actually try and delve deeper, it becomes more and more confusing. You can read into it in all different kinds of ways. And there's a lot of discussion about tarot. In fact, um, the tarot cards and the creation of the tarot, the original tarot cards and their purpose and everything is described in a lot of detail, some of which I understood and some of which I really didn't, <laughs> didn't know what they were trying to say. And um, it has more conversation on tarot than anything else, actually, which piqued my interest. But all in all, I found the law of one conversations to be extremely difficult to pin down. And for that reason, I begin this reading quite skeptical. Now, the question that I had received after all of my pre-explanation here was, is the law of one, which is um, a claim, uh, a claimed channeling through Kala in this um, series of channeling episodes that were managed or coordinated by by Dan. Uh, is it based on love and light, which are terms that are frequently used by Ra in those conversations? Um, or is it just sort of a lot of nonsense? Or is it 
false prophecy of some kind. And also, you know, what is Ra? And is Ra a real thing? Now, I did a three card spread and immediately what came up was the um, the suggestion of false of a false prophet. But it was very difficult to tell in this brief spread whether the reading was saying beware of false prophets. There's only one truth and, you know, there'll be others along the way that actually claim to have a connection when in fact they're just not. They're, they're either delusional or um, lying. Um, or did it mean that um, the whole thing is is false and is not true? So I wanted to look at it in more detail. So after that lengthy explanation, let's put down some cards. I want to know, my hair is, is wet. Anyway, I don't like hair dryers. I only use them when I have to. And um, I think they just make your hair, they dry your hair out and, um, and make it brittle. And so I tend not to use a hairdryer. So sorry, it just takes a while for my hair to dry. But um, all right, let's have a look here. We're looking, I just want the cards to give us an expression to help us to understand the law of one, specifically when it comes to the contact made by Carla and Dan through channeling in the 1980s to this entity called Ra. I'll make sure that there is a, um, a link in the description box that takes you to um, some of the websites that I'm talking about, including the LL Research site and also um, Law of One site. I just want to get an understanding. I can feel a chill coming on, so I'm waiting for that. Okay. So it's quite fitting that we do this with tarot given tarot was a big part of the discussion. Now before I throw these cards down, there, there's a number of different things that were discussed in this contact in the 80s between Carla and Ra, or actually it was Questions being asked by Dan to Ra and Ra responding using Carla as his instrument. And um, there, it's about the world or about life in existence, traveling through a series of different densities and, um, and the level of consciousness and the direction of travel, whether it's the negative or the positive path that a living entity, in particular a person or a human, will um, travel in their search for enlightenment. And then um, it appears to involve a re reincarnation and there is also an explanation of why UFOs exist, which is basically to help, um, help provide uh, those of us on Earth with an understanding that there's more and, um, and that they exist, but in a way that isn't absolute in their contact because there are other entities that are um, interfering with that contact, but also um, free will has a lot to do with it as well. So, but it's, there, it's so, there's so much conversation, you can imagine 106 different conversations, that it's far more complex than that, which is why I'm, I'm not trying to actually provide you with a whole bunch of schooling on the law of one during this video. If you're interested and you have a lot of time on your hands, there's a lot that you can see on those websites. Okay, let's let's start this. So we have the signifier and the challenge card. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts, the past, and then, you know, we've got this short term, 
But in a reading like this, it could also relate to an important moment, an important point, a sort of a way station of something, okay, that, we, that is quite significant. But it can also just be the short-term future or a snapshot in the present and the, you know, the immediate future. So as a signifier, we've got the Queen of Wands and um, it's challenged by strength in reverse. The Queen of Wands is an inspirational female energy, earthy, vibrant, um, and inspires others to act. Now, I want to, um, there's an element of integrity here. You've got, um, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it passion exactly, but enthusiasm, because passion is more on the cup suite, but enthusiasm, which can have an element of passion. We also, um, as you can see, have uh, pyramids leading up to the sky, things like that, which can be about the connection between earth and heaven, and also the choice of colors. Um, it's mostly the blue sky, and also the yellow cloak, which is um, really about a the the consciousness. Okay, so you'll notice that a lot of the other symbolism is minimized, and then we have this little cat here, which hints or suggests of certain things that become apparent when the card card is in reverse. So. Call it a little mischievous kind of essence to this card. Or it may have a little bit of bite. Now, I wanted to sort of keep all of that um, in mind because we're looking at something that might be really complex and I, I want to try and get as much of it as I can in my interpretations. Now, this signifier is challenged by strength and strength is all about, it's about courage and uh, bravery. Um, there's also the yellow signifying um, consciousness here in this card. We've got a humbleness, uh, a continuous learning or development element. And you know these densities that are discussed um, with Ra, where through your degree of consciousness and your decision to travel, which they, which they explain as being mostly a choice to travel either a positive or a negative path towards a higher level of consciousness or a more advanced degree of consciousness. This kind of can be about that. This Infinity symbol is about the continuous learning. So the continuous travel through these different densities, the courage and sort of a an improved enlightenment can appear here. Um, you've got the connection of life um, and potential for fear, you know, with the lion, you know, having this, this woman who is considered to be, who's in an apron, uh, who is considered to be humble and sometimes inferior in the world. So there's an element of equality here that she's brave enough to actually have her face, so to have her face so close to a lion's and her hand so close to the lion's mouth. But there's a gentleness here, even though the lion has a tremendous amount of power. And so there's a lot of symbolism in this card, which is in line with the... Um, with the understanding of a an evolution of consciousness that is continuously traveling towards or through different densities of existence and either developing or not and then reincarnating and coming back there seems to be something now but it's the challenge which means we have this inspiration and the inspiration may be conscious but the challenge is for it to continue to move forward. And I think we've teased it out. So this is about the development of the human consciousness and its attempt 
to continuously evolve into the through the positive path. Okay. Which is not always available to everyone. Some choose to travel through a negative path. It's described as um, by Ra as as attending two different or preferring two different types of picnics. <laughs> I noticed. I read that bit. I tried to read a little bit of everything. And they say that some people choose the positive path, which is the sunny day with a beautiful spread of a picnic and everything tastes delicious and the surroundings are beautiful and they feel light and breezy and happy. And then others choose the darker path or the, it's a different kind of picnic. And, and it goes into detail like that. It's actually a little bit peculiar. But um, I just thought it was strange that they actually were talking about something very, very human, such as a picnic. But anyway, all right, so let's keep going. Um, on the conscious level, we've got the four of swords. Now, this is about um, meditation, taking a step back, resting the mind in some way. It can be about withdrawal. It seems fitting that the card of resting the mind and meditation and taking a step, step back to sort of look at the bigger picture might be relevant to this reading. We also in the subconscious have the Wheel of Fortune and this is about destiny and um, the, the issue of luck. Now, the Wheel of Fortune, when it's upright, there's a greater possibility of good luck. I wonder whether this conscious and subconscious are about the the choosing of a path and wanting to travel through the positive path of the various densities of consciousness that require meditation and not being quite so involved in the little things that that are constantly interfering rather looking at the big picture in order to see that truth that takes you forward to a positive path. I, I wonder whether that could be what it is. In the past, we've got the chariot in reverse. This is about um, failed negotiations, bad business decisions. There's stress in this card and also sort of failed negotiations and a misguided ambition. Now, the misguided ambition can be about the, you know, the greed and the mistreatment of others. Service to others is a big part of the conversation when it comes to this law of one and the channeling that took place in the 80s. One of the things about this positive path is that it's paved with, with service to others. And that makes me look at the next card here. But in the past, what it appears is that we have failed in that endeavor because we've had our ambitions set on the wrong things. And you know, this human condition of greed and self-involvement and self-preservation and self and self gratification, all the things looking at, you know, my truth, me, me. Whenever whenever anyone ever says, especially on reality TV or something like that, they're going to speak their truth. Often what they're doing is they're trying to get themselves out of trouble or they're trying to prove something that is self gratifying. It's not really about a truth. And this self-involvement element might be what's represented here in the chariot card in reverse. Now, this pivotal, important or snapshot kind of card that sits here is the seven of swords in reverse. This can be about regret or remorse after having sort of stolen something or tried to achieve something that you thought you could get away with or that you were entitled to. But it's also about giving back and it's about service to the community. So that is really fitting. I think it's the service to others element that appears in the channeling conversations with Ra. 
So before I put down the next set of cards, let's have a look at what we've got here. What we're trying to establish, I never, I didn't ask the question of whether it's real or not. I wanted the cards to just give us the information that will help us. And then if I need to ask for the questions, I will. We have this um, inspired action. And then we have the challenge of a continuous evolution in a positive direction. And I think that this is that concept of choosing the positive path and evolving our consciousness one conscious one consciousness at a time through a positive path of evolution through the various densities i believe that they said there were seven densities but it could even be nine i think maybe it was seven it's a lot of words and so i haven't digested everything we've got here the stepping back from the minutia of life and meditating um, we also have the service um, to others and these appear to be the tools for this positive move forward which sits at the subconscious which is really the root of it all is the positive move forward in our destiny and then we have the mistakes that have prevented us from getting there in the past so let's keep going So the way I think we see ourselves, but I don't know, we'll just wait and see, but the way it sees itself. All right, the way this is us, the way others see us or the environment in which we sit. Hopes and fears. And that's very interesting that it sits beneath this card here as well. And then the final answer. I Basically, I think what the cards have done is the cards have summarized what could be the central message here when it comes to the, the law of one. The way we see ourselves is the three of um, swords in reverse. This is about um, hiding the true extent of the pain or making a quick recovery. I'm going to just hold my judgment on that right now. The page of pentacles in reverse is about being preoccupied with material possessions and wanting things easy. You see here in the past, well, this is our environment. Our environment here as humans is that we are so very materialistic, we can't see beyond it. And that's, what, that's why our evolution of consciousness is, is in the challenge here. This hiding true extent of the pain or making a quick recovery. There was that, you know, this free will element that that Ra describes in these conversations is sort of being the answer to why some take a positive and some take a negative path of conscious evolution. I wasn't sure that I was, I, don't, I wasn't sure that they were selling me on that particular bit because I was reading through it and it seemed to be, the message seemed to be absolute. People want to take the darker path sometimes. They're not happy to take the positive path. And it's their will, it's their decision. But you know, it's not always in, you know, in reality, when I think about the way life really is, it's not really the way the way things are. Some people have no choice because some people are born with a chemical imbalance that they cannot control that makes them unwell. And how can we explain their will as being responsible for their path if there is something physically wrong with the way that they have been created that causes that? I think this might be here. The fact that we as a as a as an entity as a life force are flawed and this hiding the truths into the pain might be one of the things that is holding us back the fact that we are somehow burdened with this 
element that is described here in this card as being the pain of the human condition. But what we're surrounded by is greed and laziness. So, you know, being preoccupied with material stuff and wanting things easy means that we're not going to work towards a positive path unless it's convenient for us. And that explains the past mistakes that we've made here and our misguided ambition, which often, you know, our ambition in, in life, we say we want to be happy, we say we want to be righteous, we want to move forward in a positive way. And so we go and we work 40, 50 hours a week and then complain about how much money we have and we want to buy all of the things that make our lives comfortable and we have to have a certain, you know, kind of refrigerator to put our certain kinds of food in and um and so we have you know we've got to have the right shoes and the the brand names and and the perfect um, haircut or whatever i mean not me maybe <laughs> mine is so not perfect actually i cut it myself but anyway and um too many confessions but you know whatever our whatever your particular human flaw is we all have them and um, <clears throat> I think that is represented in these cards here, but also the materialism, which actually, you know, we can't be entirely blamed for being materialistic because if you don't have money, you can't go to the doctor. If you don't, I mean, you know, you pay for it one way or another. You either pay for it through your taxes or you pay for it through private health or something like that. And or if you don't have money, you can't give your children something or you can't provide something that could be the difference between um, quality of life and no quality of life to someone that you love. And so it's not that we are awful people for being materialistic, but that materialism seems to get in the way and it is, it's pervaded in our environment. So that's what brings me to this card here. This is hopes and fears. And it's the hanged man, which is all about sort of being powerless. It's about not quite being able to get what it is that you want. So striving towards something, but not really having the power to do so. We've got the striving here. We've got the challenge that is um, represented to us. We have the environment that steps in the, that stands in the way and the human condition that sort of works collaboratively, collaboratively against us. But we also have the power and direction of travel that we want to get to and the goal um, or the, the, the vehicle appears here and then more challenge. But the final answer here is the page of wands. And this is, this is very interesting because what the Page of Wands represents is um, being a free agent and having no ties and having a full range of the world's potential. And, you know, the funny thing is, one of the things in, um, in Tarot that Ra was discussing was the symbolism of the bird. And um, I hadn't even realized that I'd clocked that as I was reading it because I was skimming through trying to read, you know, all of these conversations, at least pick up bits and pieces. And the bird is a messenger, according to Ra, and symbolized as such in the tarot. This is according to the original tarot that Ra is discussing with Dan through Carla. And you'll see here, we have... It could be a feather or it could be a bird that's sitting atop the hat of the page of wands. I've seen it interpreted in both ways. It actually could be either, depending on what it is that you want to see. And I think the fact that it's, dis it's created in a way that could be subjective means that this could be a message card for you if you are willing to accept it. And so what this reading appears to tell me is that 
maybe this law of one is not entirely um it's not entirely fabricated because the cards here have coincided with the general principles of the conversation that appears in those 106 different episodes in the 80s. We're being given a final word here in the spread that um, we have the world's potential. And, you know, I described in a previous card, I think the Queen of Wands, how these pyramids in the background, you see the pyramids are Egyptian. They appeared in the signifier and they appear in the final outcome. And they are the connection between earth and heaven in tarot, in my understanding of tarot. And so the fact that these symbols have appeared at the beginning and the end of the reading, I think are very, very significant. One thing that I know always seems to occur in the conversation with Ra um, in this 1980 series of, uh, you know, of episodes is that Ra starts their explanation with the phrase, I am Ra, or we are Ra. I can't remember if it's I am, I think it's I am Ra, and then ends it with I am Ra. And if I remember correctly, even though, you know, there's thousands of words there, they begin with I am Ra and then talk about we, 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 and then end it with I am Ra at the end. And I think it's a reminder of the connection between the 1980s discussions that were taking place and the contact, the original contact that was made with the Egyptians in the 25th century BC-ish, possibly even the 26th century or even earlier. I just know that Ra was um, had evolved to become probably the most important uh, Egyptian god by around about 25,000 um, BC. And so the conception of that had would have taken place earlier. It seems to me that there's some merit here. Okay. What I got in my previous reading, which was the reading that I did on... Um, on Patreon was a warning to be to beware of false prophets. There was something that I saw in the conversation from the law of one with Carla and Dan, where Ra said um, it wasn't it wasn't said as plainly as this because actually nothing is said plainly it's a bit of a brain bender when you're trying to understand this conversation that's taking place with all of those words but somewhere in the middle of that i remember seeing a, a very long and detailed kind of explanation of this is the only law there is only one creator which can be um it doesn't have to be a single entity. It is a, well, it could be a single entity of combined things, but there is not a series of different creators. It's only one, a single concept. And channeling is rare. I think I, if I remember correctly, and I might be wrong on this point, if I, if I'm, a, if I correct, correctly remember, since 25 or 26,000 BC in Egyptian times, up until the 1980s when Kala was used as the instrument instrument of channeling. Ra said in those conversations that they'd only made contact here seven times. That's very, very telling. Because, you know, when you look at the internet now, everyone has had contact with Ra. It's like, you know, Ra is, it, it's like Ra is having a party and everyone's invited. So I think that what we will find is that there are a lot of false prophets out there. And so um, that is something that I think we may want to just do a quick read on. But also there was another message that I don't know how to word exactly, but it was sort of an extension of that conversation where Ra stated that there is only one um, 
there is only one law and one creator. And that the messages are free. And so I can't remember the words that they used and I didn't realize it was going to become so important in this in this video. But um, I'm sure that if I've seen it, someone else will see it as well. That the messages are free and to be mindful that uh, the, the truth can only be provided by people who provide it for free. So if someone is charging you to hear this truth, they are probably a false prophet. And it was something like that. If anyone can find that text, uh, please let me know where it, where it can be found and I'll provide a link to it or provide me with the link to that text and I'll make sure that I've, I pin your, your post um, so that everyone can see it. But I do remember seeing it. And, um, but there's so much information in these conversations. Let me just put down some cards on that concept of, of charging. Because, you know, there are a lot of people who say that they have the truth, but they'll only tell you if you pay them or if you have a special membership to be able to hear it and that kind of thing. And that does sound a little strange. Because why would a God, why would the creator of all living things pass their very rare and special message onto someone for the purposes of profit? It does sound strange, doesn't it? When you kind of put it into words. Let's just see what the cards have to say. This card again, the Page of Wands, the Knight of Cups, and the Five of Cups in reverse. Okay, so this is our final answer, which is that, you know, the world is our oyster. We have, um, we have messengers here, and the messenger is the bird on the cap. Okay, if that's how you interpret it, you may interpret it as a feather, but it could be either. And so there are, there is a message, there are messages to be heard. And, um, and this is a, a messenger card as well. The Knight of Cups is about romantic, uh, idealistic views and being unrealistic from time to time. This, and there's also emotion based in both of these cards. So we have the inspiration to move forward and the world is our oyster. We can learn an awful lot and we can take the positive path. I think that this card is a very interesting card to have chosen as the anchor card because this idealistic, romantic uh, emotion that we may have can lead us down an unrealistic path from time to time. And, you know, when you head down that unrealistic path, beware of the untrue love, the deceitful lover. And this is the false prophet that appears when the card is in reverse. They will tell you whatever you want to hear, but it's not true. It's for their own gain. And they use your emotion, which appears here in the card, to sort of suck you in. OK, so I think this card has been chosen for a reason to sit in the center of this reading. What we also have is we have the five of cups in reverse, which is about acceptance, calm, um, and, and, and basically um, healing a rift or, or, or lessening the grief. But it's mostly about the acceptance and calm. And I think that acceptance and calm is also chosen because of a reminder of the pain and hurt and disappointment that can be there in its place. I think what this reading is saying is to travel forward in your pursuit of inspiration. So you have an entire world of resources to learn from and you have an entire world of information. You have an entire universe of information and beyond. So there are no limitations here. But keep your emotions in check. 
don't be unrealistic in your expectations because there are false prophets who will take advantage of you. Don't let them hurt you and discourage you. Just be mindful and accept the fact that they exist and stay even emotionally as you pursue your inspiration and move forward. And I think that this is just a, a warning that, you know what, we can't point the finger at any particular individual. The truth is there. And I asked about the reliability of some of these um, people who claim to have ownership of the truth. It must be ownership because they they want you to pay to get it. So that means they feel as though they own it. And what the cards are saying is, pursue your path. But those people, you know, be mindful of them. But don't let them hurt you. Just accept that they exist and try not to be unrealistic. You know, if you have an inkling, that maybe this person isn't quite right, then get your information elsewhere. Very interesting set of cards. Very different to what I would normally be looking at. And now I'm fascinated. Am I really going to sit down and read 106 different conversations? Maybe one day. Um, it's also on tape, so you can hear it, but it travels very, very slow and it's quite distorted because it was a 1980s um, cassette tape recording and also um, Carla appears to be in a trance or something because uh, her her words are very very slow um, and so it takes a very long time to get through these conversations you'd be faster reading it this is a long long video but I knew that I needed to put down more than three cards which is the reason why I wanted to do a full reading on this thank you so much for the question and thank you for watching I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams